G'day guys, my name's Nick. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to carry out a brake fluid flush and a brake fluid bleed. Now, I've got a couple of really good tips for you guys and also a little hack on how to make your own DIY bleeder at home with some things you might have. So stay tuned guys and we'll get stuck into it. So the first thing we need to do is determine what sort of brake fluid our system requires. So I've just come out to the engine bay here and I'm just looking on top of the brake master cylinder and on top of the cap, it tells us what sort of brake fluid is required. So I'll just undo the cap and I'll show you guys now. What you can see here in small writing is it says use only dot three or dot four fluid from a sealed container. So that means that this braking system can be used with either DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid. So I'm going to be using Penrite Super DOT4 brake fluid. And the good thing about the Super DOT4 brake fluid is the fact that it does have a slightly higher boiling point than just standard DOT4. But it is perfectly fine to use in any DOT4 system. So that's why I'm going to be using it today. So the other bonus of the Penrite brake fluid is the fact that it is the same colour as the fluid in the MUX's braking system already. So that means when we're mixing the two together, it's not gonna get this color difference that you might see if you used, say, blue or the green brake fluids that are available on the market. So the first step to flushing the system and bleeding out brakes is to remove the cap. The second step is to remove the little filter in the top of the master cylinder. And to do that, we just give it a bit of a twist, a bit of a wiggle, and it should just come straight up like that. We'll just put this to the side and now we can suck all of the fluid out of that master cylinder. So now we're up to the point of needing to suck the brake fluid out of the master cylinder. So what I'm going to show you guys now is how to make your own DIY vacuum pump, a little suction pump, so we can suck the fluid out of the master cylinder and also bleed the brakes. So let's jump over to the workbench now and I'll show you guys exactly how to make it. So to make our one person vacuum brake bleeder, what we're going to need is just a spray bottle. So it can pretty much be any sort of spray bottle you have around at home. We only need this head part and the tube. So we'll just remove that. So this is all we need. We just need the spray bottle head and the little tube. And then what we do with that is we actually connect it to a clear piece of vacuum hose or a little rubber hose similar to like irrigation hose and that sort of thing so you might have some lying around or you can use some vacuum hose and then we just connect it to a little straight fitting here so just a straight barb fitting and then onto a piece of vacuum hose which i've selected which fits perfectly over the brake bleeding nipple on the caliper so what we can do now is we can put this on the nipple on the caliper and then we can pump the head of the spray bottle and what that does is creates a vacuum. So that's going to suck through the fluid from the system and then we're going to spray this into a little container that I have and that's going to basically vacuum suck all of the fluid out of the system and we're going to spray it into this little container so we can dispose of it. So we just need to make sure that all of our connections are quite tight and that they are on firmly and that will mean that we'll have a really nice amount of vacuum and suction when it's coming out of the brake caliper. So now we can just set this up and what we're going to do is jump over to the vehicle and we'll suck out the reservoir or the master cylinder first, get rid of all that fluid and then we can carry on with the bleed. So I've just got my little container here and I've just taken the barb fitting off the end of this vacuum pump for now. And I'm just gonna feed the rubber tube down into the bottom of this master cylinder, all the way down as far as I can go. And then I'm going to start pumping my little vacuum pump. So there you go, we've got most of that old fluid out of the reservoir now. So now we've sucked all the fluid out of the master cylinder with our little vacuum pump. What we can do is just top it all up now with our brand new fluid. And I'll just top it pretty close to the top because as we bleed the brakes, we're gonna suck it all through. So that should do somewhere there. So now we can start bleeding the brakes starting from the left hand rear wheel. So now we've got fresh fluid in our brake master cylinder. Now we're ready to bleed the brakes. So when we're carrying out a bleed on the brake system, what we need to do is start at the wheel that's furthest away from the master cylinder. 
So on my Isuzu MUX, the wheel that's furthest away from the master cylinder is the rear left wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the rear left, then work to the rear right, then work to the front left, and then to the front right. So then we can carry out a bleed through the whole system and ensure that we get the air out of every single line in the vehicle. So the first step is to remove the little rubber boot here on top of the nipple. And then we can grab our 10 millimeter pipe spanner and we can get it onto the nipple there. And then we can set up our little vacuum pump by putting the rubber hose onto the end of the nipple. So now we're all hooked up, we can loosen the brake nipple off. And we just need to loosen it off maybe about one turn. Now what we can do is get our little vacuum pump that we've made up. We can start pumping the fluid out. I'm just going to spray it into this little container. And what you'll see is that the brake fluid will come through the little tube. You can see it coming up the tube there. And then we'll start spraying the old fluid into the container. So now I've sucked through a fair bit of fluid. You can see in the line here that there's no bubbles at all. So that means that we've sucked all of the air out of this brake line and now we can move on to the other side. Perfect. So now we're onto the driver's side rear wheel. So I'll just take the little dust boot off here, off the nipple and put the 10 millimeter pipe spanner on there. And I'll also get my little vacuum bleeder ready. Just put that onto the nipple. So we're ready to go. Now I can crack this nipple off, loosen it off, probably about a turn, full turn. There we go. And now I can just do the same as I did for the other side. So I'll just start pumping all that old fluid through and bleed the brakes. So we'll keep pumping that until we see all of the air bubbles in this line disappear. So that's pretty good. So now I've stopped pumping, you can see that there's no air bubbles down in this section here. So they're all sort of moving to the top. So that means that we've sucked out all of the air in that line. So that means that we can lock off the nipple, tighten it up, and now we can move on to the next side. And now we're on to the passenger front. So what we can do is just take that off, get our pipe spanner on there again, little bleeder on there, and this is actually working quite well. So it's getting that vacuum on the system, which helps in sucking out all those bubbles. So it's really working very well. And we can just loosen that off. Got a turn. And now we'll just do the same process and start sucking through the fluid. So that's pretty good now. When I stop pumping, there's no air bubbles left in that line down the bottom coming fresh from the caliper. So there's a couple of air bubbles still traveling up here, but now coming out of the caliper, it seems to be fresh fluid. So that means we can lock that off and we can move on to the driver's side. So it's important as we carry out this job to make sure that we top up the brake fluid in the master cylinder as we're bleeding each side. So just check it after you've bled through a bit of fluid and make sure that you're not running the master cylinder dry. We'll just repeat the process again and this will be the final side that we'll have to do the bleed on. And we'll just loosen that off. A turn. Now we can just start bleeding the brakes again. So you can see the air bubbles coming up through the tube now. So it's just sucking all the air out of that line. And we're going to just spray as much through as we can. So we'll just fill this whole line full of fluid until it starts spraying out. And then we'll make sure that we haven't got any more air bubbles coming out at the end. So what this is doing is putting a really good vacuum on the system on that line and it's sucking through the fluid and removing all of the air and moisture from the system. We've still got some really small air bubbles coming through. So that's fine, we'll keep pumping until they all disappear. 
So now you can see in the line that there's no air bubbles. So now we're right to lock off this brake nipple and tighten it up. So now I've finished bleeding my brakes, all I need to do is put my little filter back in to the master cylinder. And now I just need to adjust the level, so top it up a little bit until it comes all the way to the max line on the master cylinder. There we go, perfect. Now I'm okay to refit my master cylinder lid and make sure that it's locked. And now what we're going to do is jump in the vehicle and check how the brake pedal feels. That feels perfect, so that's good. Now I've finished bleeding the brakes on the MUX. Now I just need to tidy up all my mess and clean down all the brakes. Now it's a good idea after you finish the job to go around and recheck all the brake nipples just to make sure they're all tight and then we can carry out a good clean down of the vehicle with water. So the best way to get rid of brake fluid is with water. So if you do spill a little bit of brake fluid in the engine bay or on the paintwork or something, hose it off as soon as you can and it will get rid of all of that brake fluid and make sure that it won't do damage. So brake fluid is hygroscopic, so that means it absorbs water. So it is a good idea to wear gloves when you're carrying out this job. And I like to throw a bit of cardboard down under everything so I don't drop brake fluid through the whole garage and all over the floor and that sort of thing. So that's my hot tip. A bit of cardboard, some gloves, hose everything down when you're finished and just double check those brake nipples are nice and tight. And if your pedal doesn't feel good after you finish doing this, you might need to go back and do a couple of calipers again, bleed through a bit more fluid and make sure that that pedal feels really good before you hit the road. So you can see all the old fluid here and it's actually pretty dirty. So this fluid is probably about four years old and I think I pushed it probably a little bit too long. So it's probably a good idea to do this every two to three years, depending on how much driving and towing you do and that sort of thing. So if you're doing a lot of towing, you know those brakes are gonna heat up a lot more. So it's probably a good idea to change this every two years at least. So there you go guys. Now I've carried out the brake fluid flush on the MUX. I've got all of that air and moisture out of the hydraulic system. Now the braking system is gonna be working A1 for another couple of years. So in a few years, I'll have to do this job again because over time, the system does absorb moisture. So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you did enjoy today's video and if you picked up a couple of little tips and tricks, or if you liked my DIY bleeder, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more four-wheel driving, accessory fitting, and maintenance videos. Cheers, guys.